This is Twit. Okay, here in the Fraunhofer booth, I'm talking with Benjamin Bross, uh, project manager, about HEVC, otherwise known as H.265, the new encoding algorithm that's going to allow 4K to be streamed and broadcast uh, more easily. Tell us about it. Yes. First, you get the name and the numbers right. That's, <laughs> that's impressive uh, because they are two standards and you get them both right. So uh, what we're presenting here is one year after the standard was published, we already show solutions that are enable real-time decoding and encoding uh, at a very high quality. So the, uh, the goal of that HEVC project, uh, where I was the editor, so where I wrote the specification text, uh, is able to provide 50% bitrate reduction. So that's the theory. 50% compared with the previous generation H.264. Right, that's the bitrate reduction compared to H.264. Uh, and now everyone is working on solutions to provide that 50%. And only one year after the standard was published, it was published in April last year, we have already a significant reduction with what HD solution we are presenting here is 19% overhead bitrate overhead to the theoretical HM reference encoder. Now I heard uh, yesterday in a talk that uh, we, re we, practically speaking, we're only getting a 30% increase or decrease in bitrate, uh, increase in efficiency. Practically speaking, the, the theoretical limit is 50%, but you're saying we're getting closer to that now. Yeah, it also depends on uh, what's your measurement and uh, what's your reference for the same quality. And the 50% is for the same subjective quality. Uh, and you have an objective quality measure, but people are watching videos. So it's like for the same subjectively equal quality, half the bit rate. And uh, I think we get there in, in some years. So it's not like we will end up with 30. I think give us one more year or one and a half more years and we, we give you the 50. That's I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks, God. Also in the Fraunhofer booth is a very interesting camera rig called a light field camera. And I'm talking with Siegfried Fussel about it. Uh, what can you tell us? Yeah. Typically, you have only one camera where you capture the scene. We are capturing the scene from different point of views. And uh, with this approach, you capture the complete light field of a scene, not only one specific uh, view. And then you can, uh, in the post-production, uh, make different special effects out of it. You can refocus, for example, the image. You can also virtual make a virtual camera movement uh, and also make some vertigo or dolly effects, which you can typically only do by mechanical movement of cameras. Now, will this allow uh, end users to manipulate the image, or would you not want that to happen? Our approach is first for more the professional uh, guys, means for the entertainment industry. Uh, for the end consumer, it's more uh, like uh, something like plain optic cameras. We also investigated this, uh, but uh, the problem with the plain optic cameras is that you have a micro lens array in front of a sensor and you have only a very limited uh, 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 variation in point of views. That's the reason why we created this camera array uh, and uh, you can also make it uh, even larger and then you have more options uh, to uh, uh, differentiate in the point of use. Would it also allow 3D reproduction? Sure. So, uh, as I said, you can uh, make a virtual camera out of uh, uh, this camera array and you can also do two or more cameras as virtual cameras and this allows you uh, also to change the baseline of three uh, vir virtual 3D camera setup. That means uh, uh, you have not to make uh, all of the adjustments uh, on the set, you can do this later in post. Fantastic, thanks so much. Okay, you're welcome. Finally, a moment of respite. We're inside a sound isolation booth in uh, the Fraunhofer IIS booth at NAB, and I'm talking with Stefan Meltzer, a uh, technology consultant here for Fraunhofer, and uh, you've got some pretty big news at the show, don't you? Yeah, we have uh, some interesting news about immersive audio and uh, the inductivity you can use with MPEG-H 3D audio. It's a new standard coming up from MPEG. <clears throat> and we also, for people who are not able to put all the number, high number of speakers in their living room, we have a sound frame behind you, uh, which allows you, like a soundbar today, to give immersive 3D audio to consumers. Now, uh, this is a somewhat adaptive technology, as I understand it, where it's, is it channel-based or is it object-based? It's a combination of both. Mm. So what we do is we have a channel bed for the ambience, and on top of this we have objects for 
the uh, dialogue or for special effects or for optional additional uh, commentary. Like in a car race, you could imagine that you have the commentary normally. And in addition, you can select the team radio of your preferred driver. This kind of uh, additional interactivity and personalization for the user at the end. Now, is this going to be part of the ATSC 3.0 broadcast standard? It might be. We're proposing it to ATSC, and we will see how the selection will go. <laughs> And then this uh, sound bar, it's not really a sound bar, is it? It's, uh, but it's uh, simulating a surround sound with a f just a few speakers around the TV. It's, uh, it's not simulating surround sound, it's simulating the 3D uh, sound, so immersive audio. And so that's maybe, let's say, an uh, extension of the sound bar to a sound frame. So when do we expect to see this uh, implemented in consumer products? So this is a prototype here, what we where show the concept. And uh, up to now, we have quite positive response from people listening to it. So the quality is very nice. And now it's up to the consumer electronic manufacturers to, to take this up and, and use this. The problem we have nowadays with audio on TVs is that the TV is getting thinner and thinner. So people start using sound bars to compensate for this. And if you want to go really to the immersive audio parts, then we would like to show this uh, sound frame as the new uh, way forward for the audio. Great. Thanks for talking with us. You're welcome.